Okay, I'm Aaron Souza. We've been talking a little bit about cough, and uh, here's some of the things we were doing before, including my beautiful drawing there. And we're going to go a little bit deeper into cough, and and uh, as we do that, we're going to again. I'm going to draw a little bit of a picture here, and it's me. Just just in case anybody wants to know, there's my there's my eye, and I'm still wearing glasses. There we go. Uh, ear there, and then uh, my nose, which is still prominent. It comes down, here's my mouth, it's kind of funny looking, It'll give me a chin this time, and here, there's our, where the chin is going to end, and then we're going to go inside, and here's the palate, this is the hard palate, right there, it's a little hard to see, but there it is, and it comes down, it divides a part of the airway. It's the rest of my airway, and it comes down, it goes down through the, past the trachea, and then to the lungs. There's the mean stem right there that we had before, and it divides up into little bits. And that's where the lung is. Now there are some things to remember here. This is and we'll, uh, we're going to follow the way the, a cough generally happens. So, and the receptors and things like that that are involved in making a little, sort of an introduction to that. So, we talked before up here about some reason for your cough, right? And then, so let's let's go to some of those reasons that we said before that there. There was a, a chemical, you could have a chemical cause. So those are things like uh, air pollution um, and some of those receptors. And there are receptors in lots of places. There are some back here. This is These are receptors in the pharynx. Which is no easier to say than it is to spell. So there's the pharynx, and you can see they have, there are some receptors back in there. There are some receptors in the trachea. We're going to put those right down in here. This is where the vocal cords are. You remember we put the vocal cords right in here. This is not very much to scale, but um, those are important because they close off the airway in a cough. And then there are some others, actually, down here in the lungs. And this is an important structure that you can see on an x-ray and other places. This is the carina. And there are, there are receptors there. And then there are also there are receptors as you get down into the tree. But there are fewer. And there are actually none in the really small airways. So we have all these receptors. And there are... Like I said, there are mechanical ones, and they actually sense a mechanical action back here. And um, I'm in Michigan right now, um, and so Michigan is the home of the Great Lakes, of course, but it is also the home of postnasal drip. And here's a little, we'll put a little mitten there for Michigan, and you get postnasal drip, and it comes down here, and it tickles these receptors, and that causes a cough. And one of the causes of cough is postnasal drip. Right? And it seems like every day when I'm in clinic, I have patients in the winter, particularly who have postnasal drip, and they have a dry, scratchy throat. It's not a sore throat so much, but a scratchy throat. And they have these little receptors are being irritated, and they're getting a cough. Now. There are other receptors, these same receptors, or actually I should say, they're receptors in the same places that are chemical. And these chemical receptors, one of the things they respond to is capsaicin. Now, uh, whoops, better clear that up. You don't want to embarrass yourself in the realm of capsaicin. Capsaicin is the chemical that makes peppers, hot peppers, hot. And I remember in college once we had a, 
uh, people I was living with, we seemed to have contests for who could make the hottest stir fry. And you could walk into the kitchen and you'd start coughing. And I didn't understand why at the time, but it's because these receptors actually respond to capsaicin. So all these receptors are important. And all these types of receptors, these are called irritant receptors, right? And that makes sense because they respond to irritation. Not the irritation of your brother or your sister, but mechanical or other sorts of things. So, or chemicals, those sort of things. So the, you have irritant receptors, that's what these are. And they then stimulate a nerve, right? And that's how receptors work. They, Stimulate the nerve, and we're going to. Well, what should we? We'll make the. We'll make those. The nerve will be white, and there's a nerve that comes up. So the irritant receptor, and that goes to the sensory nerve because it's carrying sensation. There we go. And these are these are also called afferent nerves and. When we speak doc, fancy doctor talk, this is E, or sorry, afferent, and it's going to get complicated because it's all about the A, right? The afferent nerves. And they then go to the vagus nerve, which is this one right here. So we're going to make these go up. There we go. And they then head to a part, an old part of the brain called the medulla. And your medulla is sitting right, actually, frighteningly close to Michigan. So here's the medulla right in there. And that is the place where the, sen the sensory portion comes in. And then it comes out. And we're going to make this gray. Hopefully you can see it still. It's kind of subtle. It comes out of here, and it goes into the motor nerves. And the motor nerves, unfortunately, are efferent. Much to the confusion of college and medical and high school students and physicians and all the rest. And those then go to the muscles that actually make you cough. So the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles and the glottis, which closes the vocal cords and those sort of things. Now, the reason this is somewhat interesting is that if you know this pathway, you can think a little bit about things that must influence the cough, right? And how you would then go about treating a cough. So here are some examples. I asked in the last video, I actually asked you to cough because we wanted to go through the parts. Well, the medulla is an old part of the brain, and you actually don't have very much control over the medulla. So if you can stimulate this pathway, there must be something in your cortex, which is the thinking part of the brain, right? So the cortex must be able to skip all of the sensory nerves and the, this part of the vagus nerve and into the medulla. I should say them. So you can use it to cause a cough. But as you probably realize, you can also suppress coughs. You may feel like you want to cough, but you can stop it. So it has both positive and negative effects. Now, if you've been sick, you know also that you can take cough medicine. And the most powerful cough medicines are the opioids. And the opioids are things like codeine, actually dextromethorphan as a relative, and they also seem to act here at the medulla to stop coughs. Up in here, as you might imagine, we can stop coughs if we can stop the receptors. So if you dry up the nose so you don't have the Michigan postnasal drip, then you won't have the sensory stimulation, you won't get the cough. But in addition, here's an interesting example. In lung transplants, they don't hook up the nerve down here. So there's no vagus nerve lung in 
the lung transplant. They don't hook it up. And you don't, if, if they mechanically stimulate these receptors down here, they don't get a cough. So you can actually stop it up there. And then, down here at the muscles and the motor nerves, if for some reason you have a neuro reason, a neuro inhibition, like say um, somebody is intoxicated with alcohol or something like that, that can suppress a cough, or if they have um, a motor problem, so they have weakness or something like that, you can inhibit it at the level of the muscles and you'll have less cough. So that is a little bit about the cough reflex, and uh, thank you very much.